Hello, my name is Imano Losute, and welcome to this video. We'll be talking about co-production, and we'll be doing so in three distinct ways. Firstly, the co-production of knowledge, then the co-production of urban services, and then the co-production of governance and institutional structures. Then I'll also highlight a concrete example of how the dynamic of co-production of knowledge helps us to understand why co-production of data and knowledge itself is a condition for participatory and inclusive city making and planning in urban Africa. It's important to note that co-production is significant for urban transformation in Africa. It has the potential to challenge and overcome current uh, development challenges and deficits and deliver equitable cities for residents. And it's also seen as a, a holistic endeavor that comprises of three shifts. Firstly, by attempting to bring a shift in the political participation in urban decision-making processes for marginalized residents especially. Secondly, a reciprocal recognition of community agency and the removal of forms of discrimination and injustice that stems from a lack of recognition. And finally, co-production aims to create a more equitable distribution of resources and services for all urban residents. So let's begin with the co-production of knowledge. Co-production of knowledge can be summarized as a collaborative endeavor of different stakeholders, traditionally between academic and non-academic actors in the process of research. And this is to generate knowledge or interventions based on that knowledge. Co-production goes beyond the traditional understanding of participatory and collaborative work and emphasizes equality in relationships and the creation of shared aspirations to generate that knowledge that advances social justice and an equitable urban future for all. As such, it is a process of co-creation that occurs when collective learning and action are both the responsibility and an outcome, and when each stakeholder has a clear understanding of their role, responsibilities, and expectations within that collaboration. Through co-production, stakeholders become partners and inherent hierarchies become progressively and intentionally made redundant. Now, secondly, in terms of urban service provision, co-production has become relevant as a response to the failures of top-down, centralized approaches of urban planning and service delivery, with a recognition of the difficulty of delivering equitable, sustainable services without the active participation of service beneficiaries. In this regard, the co-production of urban services has progressively been interpreted as a push for increased citizen participation in the delivery and implementation processes of service delivery, based on the appreciation of citizens' views, knowledge, and experiences. This can be either in the form of community-generated data, such as documented statistics and records, maps, plans, and surveys, held in a structured format, or in less structured means such as shared knowledge, oral histories, loosely generated opinions, and the like. Co-production of services also opens spaces for capacity building and sharing. This reverses the top-down technocratic approaches in favor of a more equitable, horizontal sharing of skills and expertise, which inherently supports the receiver, be it the urban poor, marginalized residents, or those that are hitherto excluded from meaningfully engaging and contributing to shaping and implementing urban planning and practice. Co-production across partners requires time. It requires negotiation, patience, and partners involved need to recognize their different incentives for engaging within the collaboration in itself and jointly negotiate a plan that addresses their respective impact requirements and needs. Finally, beyond the co-production of knowledge and services, Co-production is relevant to building and transforming institutions that support its radical posture. The co-production of institutions and governance structures is actually complementary to the co-production of knowledge and services. In the context of urban planning and policy making, governance and research, it underscores the forms of engagement with different stakeholders that ensures that a multiplicity of perspectives can be drawn upon and it is done so in a sustainable manner, which bridges the gaps in participation over time. 
particularly between city authorities and policymakers and the community residents themselves. So this form of governance structures can be in the form of working groups, committees, or new organizational systems where different stakeholders interact, generate knowledge, plan or execute service delivery, and in many African urban centers, the co-production of institutional structures may become one means of overcoming institutional bureaucracies and regulatory norms that are exclusionary or otherwise counterproductive for the welfare of the urban poor or of informal settlements. It builds and bridges relationships and has the potential to bring about some innovation or improvements to formal channels of engagement and which did not exist or are not satisfactory in themselves. So what does this all look like in practice? The co-production of knowledge, the co-production of services, and the co-production of institutional structures and governance. For instance, in Sierra Leone, Freetown, Sierra Leone, the Sierra Leone Urban Research Center, SLERC, working with two community organizations, the Federation of the Urban and Rural Poor, otherwise called FEDUP, and the Center for Dialogue on Human Settlement and Poverty and Alleviation, otherwise called CODUSAPA. Between 2017 and 2020, over a five-year period, they created community learning platforms. Community learning platforms are co-produced institutions for deliberating, decision-making across a number of informal settlements. These platforms provide opportunities to learn and to share experiences and aspirations both within and between communities, building capacities to develop collective strategies and to engage with the government. They supported the co-production of knowledge and community area action plans, otherwise called CAPS. For these neighborhoods, the basis of negotiating with the government to recognize and improve informal settlements in the city was the primary objective. With its community partners, SLERC also supported the creation of a city learning platform, a bigger, higher level citywide version of the community platforms to enable citywide sharing and coordination. For example, with the mayor, Honorable Yvonne Akisoya, and her Transform Freetown initiative, which she advocates. Strategic action plans were also developed with the communities in Freetown, drawing on the CAP, the Area Action Plan, findings. This included the informal settlement of Dwazak, where deep and wide drainage gullies running down the hillside made it hard for people to move from one part of the settlement to another, and were a hazard, especially in the rainy season, for children who needed to cross them to get to school. The residents clapped together their limited resources, and with technical advice from SLERC, were able to build a bridge. So from this example, we see that the shared experience and knowledge and aspirations between communities and the platform is an example of co-production of knowledge. The development of strategic action plans, raising of funding, collaborative construction of bridges between the community and its different partners was a co-production of urban services in itself. And finally, we also see that the learning platform itself is an example of a co-produced governance and institutional structure, which provides an avenue for dialogue within the communities and with external stakeholders like the mayor's office. To conclude, this small strategic intervention of co-produced knowledge leading to service provision, leading to a sustenance of governance and institutional structures is an example of the potential to build capacity of some of the poorest urban communities, which sets a precedent of how community-led processes can bring about meaningful change. It demonstrates how co-produced knowledge can translate into action. It highlights how marginalized urban residents are not helpless, and under the right conditions, they can become active participants in development. The community learning platforms also provided an important structure during the COVID-19 pandemic for social mobilization and care, as well as the dissemination of information and resources and filling vital information gaps in government responses. Thank you for watching this video. Bye.